welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine and I like to talk psychology. So I like to psychoanalyze different phenomena that is relevant to our everyday lives so that then you can apply it to your own life and hopefully see reward and flourish. I offer online support services currently. So that's phone, email, text, instant message and video. The link is in the bio if you'd like to make a booking. So today we're going to talk about the WAP video. Now I know I am late to the party. This video came out about a year ago and it's done the rounds. People have criticized it. It was really controversial. There was a lot to be said about this video basically. The perspective that I'm going to bring to the table is obviously um, a psychoanalysis. What I will do is explore social commentary on the female empowerment message. But stay tuned because quite controversially, I'm going to explain why this video is not empowering women at all. And so, you know, I'm not right wing. I'm not, there's no religious thing here. I'm not one of those old fashioned people that just can't handle like this, this video. I'm just going to explain why believing this video is symbolic of female empowerment is actually very limiting and it's something that we need to progressively work past as a society to achieve real female expression and real female sexual expression. Knowledge is power and I'm going to share that knowledge with you today. So that WAP video, it was released in 2020 and it was wildly successful. It debuted at number one. It was like number one in most countries, I believe. It's received quite a few awards. It broke YouTube records. It's a rap song and it's got heavy bass. It features Cardi B and Megan The Stallion. I so love Megan The Stallion. And I love her name as well. Like I would so love it if people called me Jasmine The Stallion <laughs> or Jasmine the Psychologist, the Stallion. Too much? Possibly. Anyway, I really love um, Megan Stallion. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And Cardi B is great as well. And I love the song. Like, I really do like that song. So the lyrics are quite rude, realistically. Um, they're very sexually explicit. And it's mostly about heterosexual sex and from a female's point of view or at least that's the way it's been marketed. The video has been described as female confidence, female sexual empowerment, females getting what they want, what they want in bed particularly, and equality. And it's drawn um, comparisons to 50 Cent's lolly shop song, candy shop song. So in that song, he sort of talked about his like male genitalia and what he wants in the bedroom. And I guess this was described by some as like the, the answer, the female's response. The song was heavily marketed as being sexually empowering for women. And if you reverse that notion, then you're kind of saying, if you don't agree or like this video, which is sexually empowering for women, then you must be old fashioned, chauvinistic, a prude. So you really had no choice but to agree with this song if you didn't, if you wanted to seem progressive and sexually liberated. So breaking down the lyrics, they were explicit, as I said before, and marketed as being an empowering message of women just wanting straight up sex, can tell a guy what to do, can use a guy just for sex, the way that men typically will just use females for sex. Like the reverse can happen too. And I guess it, it, it wasn't rapping about an old fashioned love story that was typical of how we thought that females behaved in the bed and in relationships. So it wasn't rapping about you take me out for seven dates before we have our first kiss, then you'll meet my parents and propose and we'll make sweet love and lose our virginity. It was just very modern and very explicit. And 
the antithesis of the old-fashioned notions typically attributed to females' enjoyment of sex and of relationships. Also spoke freely about female arousal, female genitalia, which is not openly discussed these days and it should be, it should be conversations that we're having more often, without a doubt. But it also did speak about male genitalia, what happens for men when they orgasm. So it was pretty 50-50. It talked about females and it talked about males. And really, the way that sex was described, I know it was marketed as being female empowerment, but that type of sex is typically, this is just typically, for, so not for every case, but it is going to probably appeal to men more than it is to most women. Like if it was written in a way to specifically delight females only, it would be talking possibly more about values that are more aligned with the female persona. Whereas the way that sex is described in within these lyrics is how men stereotypically think about and discuss sex. But just because it's coming from a woman's mouth does not mean that it's empowering. You're basically saying that for a woman to feel empowered about sex, they need to talk about it in the same way that men do, but they just need to be able to finally have their voices heard. But we're still playing the man's game. We're still thinking that the only way that we can achieve female empowerment is through acting like a man. Perhaps women don't speak about sex in this manner because it's just not true to who they are. And you don't have to be more masculine in order to achieve equality. Now, the video was quite audacious. It features them basically dancing around. I think they're wearing lingerie. So again, very appealing to, to the male eye. They're looking very beautiful fully made up and I'm pretty sure that they're very close to being naked like really they're um at one point I think Heidi B has just got like these tussles and then they're dancing and they're in a mansion and it's very colorful and there's snakes now this is where it becomes super limiting and where I really challenge the message and alleged symbolism of female empowerment within this video. Now, if you think about it, if you were in lingerie, and so you're really the most revealing lingerie, and you're bouncing up and down on the floor whilst doing the splits, and your friend walked in, would that be appealing to her? No. Actually, I'd probably start giggling and think it's quite fatuous to be honest. If a teacher, your teacher or your boss walked in and saw you bouncing around doing the splits and lingerie, they would not find that appealing. Um, and if they did, that would be worrying, particularly if it was your teacher. And if you really think about it, the only person that would find that image appealing would be a male and a male who wanted to have sex with you. So again, how is this video empowering women when we're still vying for men's attention, when we're still appealing to the man, when we're still making them feel, when presented with this imagery, similar feelings that they probably would have if they were watching pornographic material. And if you have a look, this song was written by Cardi B and Megan and three men. So I would dare say that the people that actually wrote the song, the majority of the song would probably be those three men. Though Cardi B is a brilliant lyricist. When she, Bodak Yellow was 
genius. It truly was like for her to create so much melody and meaning just with her voice and her message. That song was just genius. Megan Thee Stallion, like she is phenomenal. Like she's, I truly put her up with Nicki Minaj, like possibly even better. Uh, so I'm definitely not saying these women can't write, but Cardi B has been pretty forthcoming with the fact that she is just putting a name to things to make money at the moment. And that's fine. But what I'm trying to say is don't think that these lyrics were written by a female. They mostly would appeal to a man, that type of sex and women speaking like that about sex. And they, it was written by men. The video was produced by a man and the song itself was produced by another man. So all of this was created by men. So I find it very hard to believe that this is truly a female representation of female empowerment. If females were truly going to talk about sexual liberation and female empowerment and wax, I think that true liberation would be something that is on our field. It's on our playing field. By believing that this is empowering to females, what you're actually believing is that in order for us to achieve empowerment and equality, we have to be like men. We have to have a song that's similar to 50 Cent's Candy Shop. We have to talk about sex in the explicit way that men do. And that's the only way that we can achieve female empowerment. If the lyrics had stayed as they are, and the film clip, instead of having really beautiful sexual women bouncing up and down in next to nothing, if it was actually an image of, say, Hillary Clinton at the White House working towards becoming president, and her giving a little grin to the camera and saying, I've got a wap. Now that would be empowering because I don't think many men would find that very attractive, no offense. Or if it was a extremely successful female who wasn't big breasted and voluptuous and was just really smart and driven and achieved all of these amazing milestones and her sitting there saying, yeah, I've got a wap, that would be really quite liberating then because it would just be telling a message that women do have sexual desires and we're going to express it in ways that we want and that are comfortable with us and not to mirror men and how men do it. If the lyrics were really written for female empowerment and not commercial appeal, they would probably say things like, yeah, I want to do this and I want to do that. Maybe I'll talk about it, maybe I won't. And that's my right because I'm a woman and I have rights. I'm a female. We're inclusive of one another. We empower one another. The females would just be normal, everyday, ordinary looking females because if you feature women who have had aesthetic modifications, in order to please men, which Cardi B has admitted to that, like she had her butt implants done or butt injections done so she could get more tips as a stripper. And that's like, that's fine. Um, but what my point is, is she did get more tips. So looking like that is appealing to men. And we just need to stop trying to be more beautiful, trying to be more voluptuous because all it's doing is perpetuating the competitiveness and the vying for men's attention which is so restricting and limiting to females we're constantly being pitted against one another we're constantly being in competition with one another so if we had a truly empower empowering female message it would be something along the lines of, we are all inclusive, we are not vying for anyone's attention, and we support one another, and 
how we choose to support one another, support ourselves, have sex with people, we will articulate that, verbalize that, how we want and when we want. Applying psychodynamic theory to the creation of the video and its symbolic nature. Psychodynamic theory is a study primarily associated with how psychological forces underlie human behavior and how early experiences can be predicting or associated with adulthood. Sigmund Freud, who was possibly the pioneer of the movement and if you think of a famous psychologist, most of you will think of Sigmund Freud. He discussed projection. It's essentially where we attribute characteristics which are undesirable within ourselves to other people so that we don't have to deal with it. So a good example would be if you're a really a jealous person and you could feel yourself always getting jealous and you didn't like that, you couldn't deal with it. So instead you looked at others, maybe your partner, and accused them of always being jealous. So it's essentially attributes that we find unacceptable within ourselves and we therefore attribute it to others. So I try to apply this to understanding the lyrics and their motivation. So Cardi B and Megan, or the three men that more than likely wrote the majority of the song, perhaps those three men were like, we're so horny, we just want women who are freaks and let us have unprotected sex with them and do pretty much everything that we want them to do and really want it. And they have projected these characteristics onto the women and then wrapped it up in a female empowerment message and got females to sing it and are really truly evil geniuses. And so you can see, although that's quite far-fetched, you can certainly see this is not empowering to females on one level. And I think the main thing I want people to take away from this is that for females to achieve equality, it doesn't mean that we need to play ball in the same game as men. So that's it for me today. Thank you for listening. And I'm sorry, this video should have been made a year ago when the video came out. It has been so successful, but keep in mind that it was released when we were all in lockdown. And I know it's been made some huge rounds on YouTube and broken records there, but we didn't really have much else to watch. It was seriously like the first song that came out in months because the world had stopped. So it definitely has some pros, uh, particularly about having honest conversations about female genitalia and what happens when they're aroused. But I just find it hard to believe that a song produced by a man, um, the video was directed and produced by a man, three men wrote it alongside Cardi B and Megan. And it was just the only way that empowerment could be achieved is through being the same as a man. Like there are other ways for us to achieve equality. So I hope I've made that clear and I hope you have enjoyed this. And if you did, then you can hit subscribe. And I like to discuss lots of common contentious issues and phenomena. And I'm always interested to hear what you think of everything too. Anyway, everyone take care of your mental health and take care of yourselves and one another. And I will see you in my next video. Have a great day.